Good morning, everyone. Uh, delighted to see so many people uh, here uh, interested in privacy, interested in GDPR. It's a very good sign and uh, hope uh, that uh, today you're going to hear a number of uh, interesting uh, discussions. Uh, there is also a number of uh, friends uh, here uh, from the wire around, uh, so if you're interested to hear a bit more about the uh, wire, please uh, feel free uh, to uh, talk to anyone, approach anyone. So once more, uh, warm welcome and thank you on behalf of wire. And I will pass the uh, word uh, to uh, David, uh, our host and the moderator for the day. Thanks, Alan. So um, my name is David Mayer. I'll just introduce myself first. I'm a uh, journalist and writer. Uh, I write for Fortune, um, International Association of Privacy Professionals, ZDNet, and, uh, and some others occasionally. And um, I just published a book at the end of last year called uh, Control Shift, How Technology Affects You and Your Rights. And funnily enough, the book discusses the General Data Protection Regulation, which is one of the most fundamental changes in privacy law uh, it's certainly in Europe and uh, probably in the world. It's likely to be deeply influential um, because it reaches so many companies, many of whom don't realize what they're about to be hit with on the 25th of May, which is understandable uh, because it's a fundamental law that uh, affects so many parts of our modern digital economy. Um, some of those impacts may still have to reveal themselves but hopefully, uh, all of them were taken into consideration by the lawmakers. And um, our first speaker, we're very lucky to have Jan Albrecht, who is the daddy of the GDPR, I think, would be a fair way to describe you. Um, German Green, a member of the European Parliament, who really shepherded the process of the law's creation. So, um, take it away, Jan. Thank you, uh, David, and also thank you, Ellen, and uh, to Wire, uh, because I think that it is not only uh, the right time to, to get these discussions uh, started, um, but also it is absolutely necessary that uh, these discussions are uh, done here and that we are together uh, discussing uh, the possibilities, but also the challenges which come out of uh, uh, these new regulatory approaches, but also which come out of the realities which we want to re uh, uh, regulate here, because um, that's also, of course, a fact. It's not only a fact that we have done a regulation and that this regulation will be getting into effect on the 25th of May, um, and that uh, we are regulating the European market uh, in a new way uh, for data protection, but it's also a fact that the world is changing rapidly and uh, it is not only touching the question of how the world changes with, with digitization, with new technologies, but also how the world is changing with global markets global markets and actors in our lives and um, the interaction of society in general. So it's huge and that is why I also uh, would say from the beginning that the General Data Protection Regulation, um, yes, it is a regulation on data protection and um, the way how personal data in the European market uh, has to be treated and how individuals affected by it has to be, have to be protected, but it's much more than that. It is not only a fundamental law, I think it is a start of discussing fundamental principles of a, of a technologized uh, society and world, um, which is completely different of the past. In the past we have had very basic rules, um, like fundamental rights, uh, catalogs, like um, uh, food safety rules or competition standards which were affecting many areas of our lives and uh, we thought very often that's it. 
but now something additional comes to it, and that is at least data protection rules, but I also see some other new areas like IT security, like uh, kind of platform regulation in this digitalized market, um, also uh, maybe standards like interconnectivity in uh, services and etc etc so you see that now there is this technology area not anymore one area which is specifically regulated and which is separate from the rest of the world but it becomes a new layer in everything what we do and so the laws affecting it and the regulation which we pass in this area will also be a layer which will affect all areas of our life and that is interesting when we look at the GDPR because it answers quite a lot of the questions which have been brought up by the technological developments of the recent years. It's not only ask, uh, answering the question how do we enforce standards in a digitized environment where, for example, a company can just choose in which jurisdiction it sits and an individual will be faced with the fact that I have different apps on my phone, I have different websites I visit, and I never really know in which of these jurisdictions I am. Which means I don't know uh, which rights I will have, which protection I will get, which uh, language I have to speak if I want to address uh, an authority or even a court, uh, where I may be needing uh, another lawyer of another jurisdiction to learn that uh, and to get my rights at the end, but uh, where we uh, will uh, see the challenge that, that individuals really uh, are on a, uh, on a far weaker position than, than those who are dealing with the data. And this question that needed to be answered, that was the first reason why we did the GDPR, to make sure that there is no forum shopping, there is no disadvantage for those who are at the end of this, the individuals who have a fundamental right to data protection and privacy, at least uh, in the European Union, assured by treaties, and um, we, we had to do something about it. Um, the other point is that for the moment and for the last decades, we didn't really decide to make it a competitive disadvantage uh, to uh, or we didn't, we didn't really get there to make it a competitive advantage uh, to follow high data protection standards, but in fact it was a disadvantage to follow them and to be forced by some uh, regulators, uh, at least also inside the European market, to follow high standards of data protection and IT security. So there was um, a decision to be made about that, and there were two possibilities to answer that question. One was to say, okay, then uh, we have to choose the lowest standard because otherwise nobody, uh, for example, on the European market will be competitive anymore if we don't follow the standards of other markets or of other regulators in the world. Or we choose to make sure that everybody who is acting on this common market, which is not uh, um, at least the um, biggest single common market in the world, we build a common standard which is high, which is trustful, and where everybody really needs to um, uh, accept it. So one of the big uh, steps with this regulation was to make sure, while we are choosing this option of setting a high standard, but enforcing that everybody has to agree with it and to follow it on this market, to ensure that EU law is applied uh, in extraterritorial extent, which is a huge discussion, of course. Uh, calling uh, the principle behind the market location principle, a little bit like a competitive law, to make sure that nobody can just evade these rules by not being um, seated in the European market, by off but by offering the services or products from the internet uh, to Europeans, um, and to make sure that uh, everybody will feel the consequences of breaching these laws. So we. Um, did not only choose to, that, uh, to get some rules for consistent enforcement, 
between the different authorities in the European Union, but also we chose to uh, impose heavy sanctions uh, on those who are breaking these standard uh, uh, data protection rules, which might, in the first place, look a bit odd to say, yeah, but it's just data protection, but in the end, it's just enforcement of rules. And, um, of course, um, if you look at the sanctions, it's always the question, will everybody have to fear the same sanctions? And that is, to be honest, not the case. Uh, sanctions will have to be proportionate always. And that is important as one of the principles which we uh, were bringing into it. Uh, it is to make sure that if somebody uh, really thinks he or she can evade that rules, uh, that there's no way around that uh, without severe um, consequences. Um, so these are the two big answers we wanted to give. First of all, again, to make sure that individuals get their right in a digital environment, and secondly, that there is a level playing field, a, an equal competitive situation for those who follow data protection rules with a high standard, or those who don't want to do it or who want to spare some money about it, they will all be forced to the same set of standards. And of course, you still can go ahead, you still can be more and better about it, but at least if you follow these high standards, you're not disadvantaged anymore. Then, and I, I said that it is far more than that, and that there are far more areas we, we will touch. There is a huge bunch of rules which already um, anticipate debates which we are having in other areas. For example, transparency and information rights, which we would make far more stronger and simpler uh, for everyone whose personal data is being processed. We all know that nobody reads the terms and conditions and uh, data protection rules, uh, and we have so many examples uh, which are so funny, which I don't need to repeat because we all know it's still a lie if somebody uh, clicks, I have read uh, the terms and I agree, agree with them because both is wrong. Um, and uh, that is the reason why we chose to really uh, make it a core principle that the information which is given is really meaningful and simple to understand. And that this is also one of the provisions which is in the core of what is to be sanctioned. So somebody who is not making it simply understandable what's happening will be sanctioned and not like it was before where lawyers were writing, writing uh, pages of text. You're on the safe side if that is the case. In the future you will be on the safe side if it's as simply as possible understood, understandable. And I think that it's the right way to do it, to be open and clear about it. Um, and, and that leads to the point that it even goes in the uh, direction of making available the logic behind the processing of um, a personal data, which means also the logic behind the processing of all technology which we will have in the future. Because in almost all of information technology products and services in the future, there will be sets of personal data involved. Not all the data will be personal data, that's also not true. You can always go for anonymized data or for data which is like uh, the size of this room, which is just not personal information, but there will be very often in technology personal data involved. So the, the standard of making available the algorithm's logic, at least, to the individual, will apply to almost all the systems. And that is one of the basic regulatory answers by this uh, GDPR, this regulation. Another one which is also applying to all systems and which hasn't been realized until now is that we have a set of data security requirements. Uh, so IT security requirements at the end. Uh, until now we don't have really common minimum standards for IT security in <coughs> regulatory environments, but with the GDPR, at least if there's personal data somewhere involved in a system or will be involved in a system, you need to comply with a certain baseline standard for IT security. It is quite still very baseline what we foresee there and we still have to work on it in the future and I am actually working on it in the European Parliament uh, to create better standards for IT security but this is the first step into making sure that we go in this direction. Then we have uh, the principle of privacy by design and privacy by default. And that is something which is so important for the development of new products and services and new infrastructure in the future to make sure and it stands representative also for security by design or security by default to make sure that control is 
by nature given to those who are getting the services, getting the product, to decide on their own if they want to create a weakness, if they want to expose themselves, if they want to go out of their like comfort zone uh, and open up for whatever risks possible out there. And we all know that there might be so many risks today, we are, we are just not fully aware of all of it. Uh, and that is why these principles, by building in security, privacy, right from the beginning, with technology uh, so solutions uh, and uh, with also default approaches, is a very key uh, part of this regulation and therefore answering also similar questions in other areas, not only in personal data. Impact assessments, to do impact assessments of what you do when developing services and products. We have the whole debate about uh, how to regulate machine learning or AI and robotics interaction with uh, humans. The, the question of how to do and when to do impact assessments, technology impact assessments, is the core of that. And it will have to be part of uh, what we do and how we develop uh, technology and infrastructure in the future. And the data protection regulation brings that into the center of new uh, technologies. Also, uh, principles and individual rights which are new like data portability um, or also the possibilities to uh, declare an opt-out via technical standards, setting technical standards which are neutral, which are applicable uh, to many data controllers. That is the start of an infrastructure which is opening up for a really eye-to-eye -eye conversation between the individual and those who are offering solutions, technology, services, products. The eye-to-eye the -eye level is that I'm not dependent on, on the one who offers me something, uh, but I have different possibilities to go in whatever direction I, I can. Like when I'm going out of the street, I'm not forced to go one way, I can go, walk different ways, I can go to different uh, shops or different uh, offers and that is what we want to achieve also in this area and where the data protection regulation offers one of the solutions with data portability so you are not forced to like lose uh, your data if you go somewhere else um, or uh, with technical standards so that you are not forced to always set in different environments different standards but you can do it via a technical standard which has to be uh, respected. Uh, a discussion which we, by the way, also have with the e-privacy uh, regulation when it comes to uh, cookies, for example, or other tracking uh, possibilities, um, that there is technical standards which you can use and where you can trust that this is to be respected on the other side. Last but not least, I think that um, there are also challenges ahead which we haven't answered here with this uh, data protection regulation and that is starting, for example, from data portability. Uh, I think that one of the big questions we still need to answer and that is also discussed in the communications code on European level, that's the telecommunications regulation and in, in e-privacy is interconnectivity, uh, that there is really an opening up of the different silos which we are, have been building up throughout the last decades and which is very hard to be opened, especially also when it comes to hardware uh, questions, or also encryption, uh, where the standards are completely different and it's not clear how to implement encryption and if it can be mandatory in the future to make sure we have a secure uh, ecosystem um, of communication, not only between individuals, but maybe also between machines. Uh, or individuals and machines. So there is these big questions which are still on the table and I'm very happy to uh, see what's possible to move forward to that. But what the GDPR delivers for, for the moment, and that is the very positive uh, uh, notion which I want to uh, then uh, finish with, is that we have an example how we can approach these new complex technological questions and how we can approach the problem that it is more or less a global question and networks are to be global and uh, markets will be global 
to answer these questions effectively, not only by clicking as a user and trying to get other users to click the same way, but by democratic debates and decision making and by classical way of agreeing to values and basic standards so everybody can trust on and it's not up to some people who just move us from right to left or uh, try to trick us or somehow over the table and I think that this is really uh, a, huge, um, a huge chance which we have and where we can see that it's not too late for regulators also to get engaged in uh, progressive and future orientated um, regulation of the digital uh, society and digital market and that this is an, a very good example which now even before it gets into effect on the 25th of May already is becoming the gold standard for data protection rules for personal data uh, treatment in the global market, not because the Europeans were convincing other states to follow them, they are still doing that and they are quite successful with that, but because the big players and big companies on the digital market, almost everyone is deciding to just say, okay, we see that this is a standard which I can't just walk around, so I implement it. And it's just easier to implement that for all of my business rather than having the fragmented approach which we had until today where we have had to create solutions for very different jurisdictions again and again. So we see just right now there were articles just like two days ago in the New York Times how this is happening rapidly, how there's investment going into it. So this is the moment to take it as an initi initiative to say we all know this will be the standard so the question is only how to get this standard on the road and how to get some advantage out of it. And I think the big, biggest advantage out of it is uh, to gaining confidence and gaining support by consumers who see that this uh, can be really um, a, a positive uh, aspect of products and services uh, in the digital market and in their digitized life. Thank you very much.